Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to get a whole bunch of variations of this one grass blade here onto a texture sheet. So I'm just going to make a few variations here and slap them onto a texture sheet. All right, and so to do that, I'm going to jump inside the grass texture sheet geometry node. And the first thing I want to do is I want to drop down an object merge node. Now this object merge node is going to get the current grass blade. All right. And let's change the transform into this object. And what I want to do is get the result from the grass blade node. And that will then import our grass blade for us, like so. And so what I want to do is I want to create a bunch of variations. So how do we go about doing something like that? So uh, just a quick example, I'm going to drop down a uh, for each number. So I'm going to allow the user to determine how many variations they want here okay and so inside of this for each loop uh, what I want to do is each time I iterate through I want to add a new point all right this is gonna be the point to copy the grass blade to the current grass blade all right so what I need to do in this add node is I need to turn on the point right here so we get a single point in world space right at the center okay and then we just need to copy our grass blade to that particular point. So I'm going to take the current grass blade and copy it to that point there. All right. So now uh, if I wire that into the end result here, this for each end node, like so, you can see if I switch back and forth, we get a bunch of iterations or now we have a bunch of copies. So currently if I were to go to the for each end node, we have 10 copies. So I can change this to get the different amount of copies. But for each copy, I want a bunch of different variations. All right. And so to do that, what I need to do is I need to get the current iteration that we're on. So what loop are we on? Because currently I have 10 iterations. So that means that this for each block is going to run 10 times or yeah, 10 times. So it's going to start at zero, then go to one and two. And I want to get that number. So that number is actually accessible on this for each count node. And I'm going to rename this to loop data something I like to do and you don't have to um, it's not like it th that's necessary for the system to work but you'll notice that in this loop data node all right you'll notice that um, this iteration value is set to 9 right now and that's just because our iterations are set to 10 up here all right if I go to my for each end node and turn on single pass and go back to this loop data node all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this geometry spreadsheet to look at this specific node currently that way I can select the for each end and actually slide the single pass here. So you can see now that this iteration right here, all right, is changing as I move the slider. So now that's our number that we can use to generate a random value. All right, so now that we've got that information or we've got that concept in our, our heads, let's go back up. And what I wanna do is start to put some of my own custom properties on this grass blade here. And so I'm gonna select the grass blade geo node and I'm going to go and hit the little cogwheel up here and say edit parameter interface. Now, if you are familiar with creating HDAs, you might be thinking to yourself, well, why are we doing that before we're creating the HDA? Because, and the reason is because um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a massive HDA. This is more of like what I like to call compound HDAs. Okay. This allows me to bundle up a bunch of little tiny processes. All right. Into a single HDA instead of it just being a single geo node and then saying create digital asset. This is a subnetwork that has a bunch of stuff inside of it. So it allows you to really accomplish a lot uh, with one HDA. Now, I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. There are cases where you want to just make a single HDA that's just a single geometry node. This is mo a more complex, more um, compound type of HDA. So anyways, all right, so now that we've removed all the UI elements, from our geometry node. I'm going to go back to that edit parameters interface and I'm going to just drop out a integer. Okay. And on that integer, I'm going to name it ID. And this is going to be our iteration uh, ID for the label and hit apply and accept. And now we've got this iteration ID. And so what I want to do is I want to change this value as that iteration changes down here. Okay. And so to get access, to this value, we can use a detail expression. So I'm going to say detail. All right. We want to get the information from our uh, grass texture sheet and then from that loop data node. All right. And the 
the name of the iteration or the name of the, the value that we want to get is iteration. All right, so that's that variable name or attribute name. We should call it. And there we go. So now I have the current iteration that we're on. All right, you can see this is zero. So if I were to, let's actually pin this one now. Okay, and jump into our grass sheet. And I actually do need to uh, change this. So let me make a new parameters view here and just quickly change this. So you can see that our iteration is now equal to three. And if we look at our grass blade, our iteration ID is now equal to three as well. Cool. All right, so now we are getting that value. So now what we can do is we can use that information. We can use this ID value inside of our network. All right. So we're creating, you know, procedural relationships between all these nodes, but the nodes themselves contain just the functionality that they need to process. And so really all I'm going to do is vary the, the bend. Now you can go and, you know, add tons of variations to these, but I, I obviously just want to get the basic concept across in this video series. So to create a random value that goes from one range to another, or one number to another, uh, we're going to utilize the fit uh, zero one expression. All right. And the, for the first argument, we need a float. Now this is the number that we want to uh, create a random number from. So we're going to use the rand function and I'm going to get our ID parameter off of the node here. All right. And that should actually be on the, there it is. ID. There we go. All right. And so that's our channel. So now we're getting a random number from zero to one. All right. And I want to remap that from negative, let's say 10 to 10. Let's just do that. You can see it moved already for us. So now if I were to go back down into our grass te texture sheet node and change this, you can see that we're getting variations, a bunch of variations. All right. Of that bend. Cool. So now we're generating a bunch of uh, iterations. So if I turn off the single pass, you can see now we've got a bunch of grass blades. They're all a little bit different. Cool. And you can go back up and uh, this is another great way to expose properties or uh, create more features. Let's go and um, create another float up here. And this is going to be our bend range like so. So I'll call this bend range. This just allows us to have a little bit more freedom here. So our, our minimum range is going to be something like negative 20 and our max will be 20. And I'll just set the default to uh, 10. And actually, let's just keep this at uh, zero. There we go. Let's say accept. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into the grass blade node here, go back to the bend node, and I'm just going to get that parameter. So I'm going to say ch dot dot forward slash to go up and onto the actual grass blade geo node. And I'm going to look for that bend range property or parameter. All right. And I'm going to replace our hard coded values with a value that now we can change up here. There we go. Very cool. Okay. So that's what more or less what I'm looking for. Okay. So the next step in all of this is actually get it onto a sheet. Um, so that way we can turn it into a texture. So to do that, I'm going to create a grid. All right. So this grid is going to represent our texture, but it's still going to be in 3d space. All right. And what I'm going to do is put it into the, uh, Y or X, Y plane over here. There we go. Very cool. Okay. And I also want to change the rows and columns. Now this is going to allow me to create the placement for the actual blade. So, uh, for our rows, I really just need, well, in this case, I just want two rows because I want to have these little uh, vertical slats here, if you will. All right, and we'll just keep that to something like four like for now. And so in each one of these little quadrants here, these quads, I want to have a grass blade. All right, so how do we go about doing something like that? So we're actually going to have to change this up a little bit here. Uh, and what I want to do is I actually want to now go instead of for each number. All right. I wanted to say, uh, by pieces or points. All right. And we're going to loop over primitives. Okay. But we don't really need to go and, you know, change all these parameters. In fact, you know, I much prefer to just go and, uh, drop down, a for each, uh, primitive 
right? Because all the, the stuff is all hooked back up. Plus, it's good to get used to the presets. So we really just want to copy uh, this stuff over here. Or we don't need, necessarily need to copy it. We can just uh, replace this here like so. And just unhook this. So you can hold down Y on the keyboard and cut the, the lines there like so. Now this stuff isn't set up, but we need that meta node again. So let's get this all back in order here. All right, so we need this loop data node back. And so what I'm going to do is just come up to the for each begin and say create meta import node and then just call this loop data. There we go. So now we're going to loop through all of the primitives here. So if I were to hook that in, uh, you can see now we are getting a grass blade or all those grass blades per per uh, primitive there. And that's not what we want. All right. What we want to do is we want to create a single point um, at the bottom of each one of these uh, strips here. So, and you can see, let's actually uh, just kind of start from the beginning here. We'll put this stuff over there like so. There we go. All right. So if I were to set the single pass, we can see that we're going through each of those primitives. All right. So uh, what we want to do in each pass is we want to add this point. So let's do this. So let's add this point. We want to add this point right here. And we actually want to center it down at the bottom of this particular primitive. All right. And so uh, to do that, you'll notice that we have a way to position our point in space. And, and we know where the center of our particular primitive is. Uh, we can use the centroid. Okay, so let's do that. We want to center this up, the current point all right, that we've just added. We want to center it up in the uh, x-axis. So I'm going to use the centroid function. And we can just get the input uh, from the uh, first input here, which is there's only one of them. So we can get just that single input and we can say dx uh, like so. Oh, and this one's we want to do the op uh, input path. I believe there. Let's actually get this. There we go. Op input path. It's not allowing me to do the whole thing. That's weird. So op input path. And we want uh, that one and zero. There we go. So you can see now it's centered up on the X, which is great. We should probably do the Z as well just to be safe. All right. So we'll do DZ for the Z position. And then for the Y direction, I just want to get the bounding box of this quad and find the Y min. All right. So we're going to do BB box. And we're going to take the first input there. And, um, and I bet you that works in the centroid too. So we'll say the D uh, Y min like so. And there we go. Now we now have a point there. Cool. Let's go and try this out so we don't have to type in op input path. Yep. So we'll just type in zero for the only input, but it also represents the first input. Cool. All right. So I also need a way to, to blow away or blast the um, current quad. So the first thing I need to do is group it. So we're just going to put it into a group here. And again, I'm using the dollar OS, so I'm going to say um, orig quad for original quad. And yep, we just want the whole primitive there. So basically now that after we've added that new point, this is going to be our copy point. Um, I'm going to blast the orig quad and we'll get that particular group. And there we go. So now we're left with just our point. So now we can go and uh, copy this. Uh, so if you want to drag whole networks together, hold down the shift key. There we go. Cool. And now we've got a point or we've got a grass blade on our point. Super cool. All right. And we're getting a bunch of variations out of all this. And if I were to turn off single pass, you can see I'm getting really tiny <laughs> uh, grass blades when our grid is actually really, really big. All right. Now we can always go and just normalize this. We can say one and one like so. There we go. And now we've got perfect fitting into our different areas. But I actually do want to keep this uh, at its defaults. And the reason why is because I just, I honestly just want to show off how we can actually fit those guys appropriately to whatever size we, we provide as our grid. So uh, we're going to use the uh, match size node. So I'm going to use match 
size, like so. All right, so it wants an input, and then it wants uh, a bounding box that we want to use to match against. All right, so I'm going to take in the current grass blade that we have. All right, and I'm going to feed in our quad that we're currently working on. All right, so this guy right here. Now, you could do it like that, right? But if you want to clean up your graphs, let me just show you really quick. Because um, I do kind of like to keep all these things pretty organized. We can also just drop down an object merge. Like so. And we'll say get current quad. So we'll get current uh, quad. Like so. And we don't need to transform it. And we'll get it from the group node rich quad. So now we have the current quad and I can just feed that in. All right. So it keeps it nice and clean. All right. It's easier to read that way, at least in my opinion. All right. So now we have our particular grass blade in the center. And now I, I don't really want to do that. I just want to scale to fit it. And I really just want to scale it in the Y direction. Um, and I don't want to do any justification because it should already be no translation. There we go. So we want to put it on to center and just keep translate on actually. And then we want to scale to fit this. And um, what I want to do is a uniform scale, I believe. And I want to match the Y. And that basically got rid of our actual offset. So let's just take a look and see if all these guys are now in their proper size that we're providing. All right. But now what I'm getting is, let's just put these all back to center then. There we go. Cool. So that's what I was looking for. Very cool. Might as well just put these all back to center then. I was wrong. All good. Okay. So now we've got all of our grass blades in place. And the cool thing is, is if I actually copy this here and then paste this reference, if I were to change the size, you can see that our grass blades go with it. And if I were also to change amount of copies you can see now I'm getting a bunch of grass blades and it's going to try to scale it as best it can to fit it onto the texture pretty cool all right so let's do four it seems to fill it up nicely okay so now we've got a whole bunch of variations on our grid and um, one thing I would like to do is actually add some padding all right so how do we actually add a little bit of padding between these now in this case it's not necessary but I just want to show this before I close out this particular video. So what I'm going to do is create a poly extrude. All right. And for uh, all the individual elements, what I want to do is do an inset. And this will basically allow me to create a border around each of those. And in order to get rid of that padding, because now if we were to feed that through our loop, it would go through all these little tiny guys as well. Uh, what I want to do is uh, just output the front. I don't need the sides anymore. So we can pass that in there. All right, and take a look at our final results. And now we've got a little bit of padding. And what we can do is we can actually change that padding and expose this value to allow people to, you know, give a little bit more padding to it. So lots of uses for that. Because honestly, you don't want um, the grass blades butting right up against the border there. And so there we go. Cool. All right, so with that, we now have our grass blades all set up in a texture sheet type of format. What we want to do now is get this into a texture format because currently it's still all geometry. All right, so let's take a look at that in the next lecture.